Hello, and thank you so much for supporting Eternia. As you might imagine, I have been learning more and more about consciousness and trying to come to a deeper understanding of my coma journey that happened back in November 2008. I'm sure many of you have read uh, my attempts so far to understand that coma journey that were published in my first book, The Proof of Heaven, and then the book that followed that, The Map of Heaven. Uh, but I assure you, I am still very deeply mystified by so much of what has happened, and I'm in an ongoing mission to go deep within consciousness and try to come to a fuller understanding. It's very much about a coming synthesis of science and spirituality that I think will come to this world all around the phenomenon of consciousness itself. Now, it turns out we're at kind of an interesting uh, juncture in this whole discussion. Uh, a lot of that juncture has to do uh, with Einstein and with uh, the phenomenon of entanglement that one finds in uh, quantum physics that is really a deep part of the mystery. And this is the part that Einstein fought really to the end. He called entanglement of two subatomic particles, uh, that is the measurement of one particle reveals something about the other particle, uh, even though they may be halfway across the universe when a measurement is taken. And he called that spooky actions at a distance. And until his death in 1955, Einstein did not believe that quantum mechanics was a, was a complete uh, physical science because, in fact, he postulated that there was something called hidden variables uh, that would explain the fact that you could make those measurements in the subatomic particles a great distance apart and that, in fact, uh, they, it was just because the hidden variables preserved the information, not that the information was passed from one to the other at the time of measurement. Uh, it turns out that Einstein, with two colleagues, uh, Podolsky and Rosen, in 1935 wrote a, a brilliant paper, uh, which is often referred to as the EPR paradox. Um, and, and this paradox was a way of trying to assess through thought experiments uh, whether spooky action at a distance or hidden variables were the way the universe works. Now it turns out that that's the way the matter remained until the mid-1960s when a brilliant Irish physicist, John Bell, came up with something known as Bell's inequalities. Uh, and these were actually a way to design scientific experiments so that one could assess whether or not spooky action at a distance or hidden variables of Einstein were occurring. Now, what Einstein was, was seeking, uh, as so much of our conventional physicalist uh, scientists are seeking, were really two uh, principles. One is the idea of locality. That is that physical particles interact locally with each other. Uh, so, for example, photons can come from a distant star, but it's the connection of the photon from that star to our eye that actually connects and enables us to have the local reality of that star, even though the star is at a distance, it's that photon that brings us together. Now, uh, in addition to this concept of locality of all interactions, uh, is the idea that properties to be measured in the subatomic world exist prior to measurement and are not crystallized into reality by the act of observation. Because it turns out that the deep enigma of quantum mechanics suggests very clearly, uh, as have all of the ongoing experiments uh, more recently refined um, beyond anything in our history, uh, show that in fact that spooky action at a distance is the way this world works. Now it turns out that the conundrum has gotten to a point where there might still be a loophole that would satisfy Einstein, that would actually support this kind of notion of hidden variables uh, over and above the spooky action at a distance. And that loophole involves nothing more than that question of all questions, whether or not humans have free will. Now it turns out that the free will uh, question is one that the conventional reductive materialist science that I worshipped as a neurosurgeon before my coma would very clearly state, of course, none of us have free will. That conventional science would be quick to tell you that it's the subatomic particles in the atoms and molecules of the brain all following natural laws, uh, the laws of physics, chemistry, and biology, that 
uh, give us this illusion of consciousness and illusion of free will. Whereas in fact, our conventional science would say, no, there's no such thing as consciousness or free will. Those are just the epiphenomena of these particles all following natural laws. There's no place for soul or spirit to interject that free will. That's what our conventional science would try and put out there. That's why it's so interesting that this uh, tremendous question uh, that Einstein uh, really was challenged by to the end of his days and that all of our modern physics continues to be challenged by uh, centers around the fulcrum of that whole question of free will. And in fact, what I would argue is that this is all about determining that we do have free will, that sentient beings have free will. In fact, I would say that's the whole reason this universe exists, is to allow sentient beings to come into these incarnations and manifest that free will, to provide our destiny out of our will for what we want to bring into existence. This is very much at the heart of what Eternia wants to do with this world, is help us realize that free will is something that we possess as sentient beings, and that in fact we are co-creators of the universe and how it is to evolve. Uh, very much along the lines of Teilhard de Chardin talking about the evolution of consciousness, that is very much what I believe uh, is, is coming to the fore here. And it's interesting that this very singular question about uh, hidden variables versus um, versus the whole idea of spooky action at a distance uh, comes down to that question of free will. And, and my feeling, based on my journeys into consciousness, uh, is that we will come to show that free will is actually truly existent. Uh, and what that means is that that loophole is closed and that in fact free will rules that is a, a big reason why this universe exists and why we're here and that we can each manifest that free will. Now what does this mean in a practical sense? Uh, what it really means is that the hardships and difficulties in our lives uh, which I would say as a physician certainly includes illness and injury, that in fact these are beautiful gifts because these are uh, the challenges that our soul puts in our way to offer stepping stones, kind of mileposts for our growth, to provide the engine for ascendance of our souls and our soul groups in this deeper understanding of our journey. And these hardships and challenges, uh, it's how we respond to them. And that, I believe, is something where our free will can really manifest and shine in its most beautiful fashion. If we choose to manifest that unconditional love of the Creator for the creation, which so many near-death experiencers, other spiritual journeyers, and I'm sure many members of Eternia who have had their own spiritually transformative experiences, to realize that we are far greater than just one little body, physical incarnation, birth to death, and nothing more. But each and every one of us is far greater than that. And the lessons that we are putting out to this world through the work of Eternia, thanks to your support, have everything to do with realizing that we can do this. We can bring that infinite healing power of unconditional love to the individual self, to the soul groups, to ethnic groups, national groups, to all of humankind, to all of life on earth and beyond. Because this is a far bigger deal than just what is happening here on earth. And I believe this is all part of our jo joining a far grander community. But to do so, First and foremost, we must be loving beings that fully acknowledge the oneness of all consciousness, how we are all in this together. It is very much about manifesting that unconditional love, compassion, forgiveness, acceptance, and mercy for all fellow beings. And this and the demonstration of free will and how we are all here to manifest that free will and to co-create a beautiful evolving universe that will be far more harmonious uh, and synchronized and beautiful and loving and compassionate than the world in which we live today. But the fact is, we all can serve as points of light to bring this beautiful love into reality, to bring the power of that 
unconditional love and its infinite power to heal to bring to this world. We know full well that the status quo does not work. We know that this is actually quite urgent. Uh, the uh, transgressions of humanity, uh, especially with the successes of science uh, and technology in the 20th century, but unbridled from human spirit, has allowed for a dangerous situation in which we are threatening our planetary ecosystems. More than 30% of species are threatened with extinction, uh, thoughtless homicide and suicide, all of conventional warfare. This is all something that we have the power to reverse, to make this world a far better place. And so I'd like to thank you at this time. I uh, want to invite you to go deep into consciousness. This is very much about uh, going within because in fact I found from my own personal journey uh, beginning about two years after my coma as I became much more involved with brain entrainment using differential sound frequency uh, for uh, deep meditative exploration, work that I do with sacred acoustics. Uh, this is all about going within and that is something that each and every one of us can do because by coming to fully know our consciousness and our higher soul and the connectedness that we have with other beings, uh, that this is all about a co-evolution that we share together. Uh, this is what I invite you to join me in uh, as Eternia and all of us move forward towards a far better world. Thank you very much.